It's the idea of looking at the, the food distribution networks within the existing transportation models. I mean, that's not what ex exactly we were tasked with by the charrette, but that's kind of where we've moved our focus to. Most people, when they think about food, like if you think of the 100-mile diet, you're thinking, how far is it from the farm to my house? But the reality is, is that that actually is only the tip of the iceberg. What we were able to document is really the multiple thousands of miles that every meal has to travel when you add them all together. We've kind of come together around the idea that how food's distributed is kind of at the core of the problem. Take, for example, a cup of coffee. Pulp and paper has gone from Northern Ontario or British Columbia over to China, turned into a paper cup, brought back, then taken to a landfill in London and then back. We had uh, 10 trips and each of them go two ways and most of the time the return trip is empty. A huge percentage of the trips are totally without any value. One fact that's very clear is that 78% of all food in the GGH is coming from Loblaws, Sobeys, and Metro stores. It's not just about a monopoly on food consumption, but it's also a monopoly on food transportation. So in order to try to create an equitable playing field, it was like, what if we diffuse these systems? Distributors, producers, and uh, let's say consumers start to create different interconnected relationships using a lot of different types of transit. The subways, the GO Transit links, expanding Bixi to be a delivery service. How can you connect with the millions and seven billions of food producers and actually move directly into contact with one another? What Google has done for information, what Facebook has done for connecting, we will do for the food system.